Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us this week. We're in Unionville, Pennsylvania at Laurel Hill Farms. I have Linda with me. She has a horse that is probably one of the worst rescue cases that I have ever seen. And uh, she owns this horse now and he's got some issues. We're gonna deal with that. And she's gonna tell us a story. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind and Climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride One true that cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one true horse We're Gonna take a ride on one true horse Okay, so Linda Tell me a little bit about his story and then what some of his issues are. I notice he's kind of anxious to put his mouth on you and that kind of stuff, but what? tell me a little bit about him. Uh, he was rescued as a four and a half year old colt where he'd lived for four of those years in a 12 by 12 foot dirt patch with no shelter and total isolation. Um, his rescuer took him and over the course of time had him gelded when he was strong enough. And in the seven months she had him, he put on 207 pounds and grew two and a half inches. Wow. Um, he then went to another home and had a good start with his riding and um, has done very nicely in that part of his life. The challenging part of his life is anything that has to do with um, electric engine sounds set him off, clippers, vacuums. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a pair of clippers and I'm going to have you turn them on and just sh show us sort of how he's going to respond. Okay. Then I'll take over from there. Okay, we've got just a pair of real quiet little uh, clippers here that they had here at the barn. So I'm going to have you go ahead and turn those on and just show me what he would, his normal response would be. Okay. And that's... Okay, so Linda, his reactions weren't huge, but he's not in a cross ties, he's not in a grooming stall. We're out here in a larger pen where it allows him a little more freedom of movement and a little bit more the concept that he can escape it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, to allow him to escape, but show him where to escape to, okay? So the only tools that I plan on using at this moment uh, is my bridle. I've got a full cheek snaffle bit, which will help spread the pressure out against his cheeks and a dressage whip uh, to just motivate him forward. And I'm gonna work on the ground and adjust his headset and, and to, to where I can get his head down and keep him low. When a horse gets his head down, every horse on earth puts his head down on the ground for one of three reasons, to drink, eat, or lie down. Every horse puts their head down for one of those three reasons. The one thing that they have in common for all three of those is in order to get their head down like that for those three activities, they have to calm down. All right, so we'll work here. Now you can see my hands are up here over his ears. That doesn't bother him. He's okay with all of that. It's just the sounds. It's not the motion of clippers up here that's gonna bother him. It's simply the sounds. This horse tends to be easily distracted and quick to want to nip and step into my space and crowd me. He is insecure and looking for security and looking for leadership. And when he's not finding that, then he's taking it him, he's taking the initiative himself to become that leader. So I'll let him wear that snaffle bit. And what I want to start doing is giving him a clear cut set of definitions. Now, when I first do this, He's likely at some point to say, no, I don't want to do that. And the way he's likely to say no is to reach over and nip at me 
or to sort of kick up his hind end when I ask him to step forward with the dressage whip. In either case, I will quietly reprimand him and not turn it into a big fight. I don't really need to, to focus on getting in a fight with this horse. What I need to do is focus on changing his mind. So I'm gonna start just like if I was at a, 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 working on a colt and a colt starting, and I'm just gonna ask him to soften his nose to that bit and lower his head, right? Okay. God. He, he's coming over really soft. As Linda said, his riding, uh, his, his training under saddle has gone very well. They've shown us some wonderful pictures of this horse over fences. He's uh, a really beautiful moving horse. His training has gone very well. So this part isn't like it's gonna take a lot of effort. He understands what it means to come to the bit and to become soft. Oh, God. God, right there. Then I'm going to come back here and just disengage his hindquarters and start his body moving. Move his hindquarters around. Good. Good. I'm going to do that on both sides. Wait for him to soften. There. Good. I'm going to start asking him to move forward. And you watch this horse, he's pushing my arm with his nose constantly. And, and he's kind of saying, I'm not sure what the deal is and maybe I'd like it if you got out of my space. So I'm going to really be nice to him when I can and then just push him forward. And I want to stay up here as close to his shoulder as I can and walk with him there, right there. And I want to just see him walk forward and soften that nose. And what I want to find is a spot where I can soften his body and I want to give him a cue that he knows and understands so when the distractant comes back, there's an exercise that he and I both know together that we can practice. You know, soften that nose and kind of lift on this rein. And as I lift on this rein, what I want to see is his nose stay soft and his shoulder right there, step out of my space. And as soon as that shoulder steps out of my space, I'm gonna release him and go back and do the same thing. It's not unlike the groundwork I would do with a halter and lead rope. But I don't wanna move him that fast and right here where he starts to jog, I'll slow him down. Just pick this shoulder up Move it over, and then come back here and move his hindquarters over. Okay. Remember, your horse thinks the same whether you're on the ground or on his back, and he's seeking leadership. That's what he's looking for. So I need to have a plan and something for him to do when he starts to lose control of, of his emotions. Good boy. So right here, before we ever worry about an electric motor, I want to settle this down right here. This situation where he gets kind of like, he's got to run and escape. He's got a fright and flight reflex that's in good shape. Okay. You see him fight with me here? There we go. I want to see him quit fighting and quit trying to escape and just get nice and soft. There we go. What am I looking for? For him to yield control over his body to me 
without anxiety, without an attitude. We think a lot of times of a horse like this and somebody will say, you know, well, he's spoiled. Think about the definition of spoiled. What is spoiled? It is allowed to go bad, right? And that's sort of what's happened here. This horse is absolutely left alone in a pen, not fed, not cared for, down to where the pictures we've shown you uh, are the worst I've ever seen. So he'd been allowed to go bad. Well, then we take him back from that scenario and you just have to admit, you're gonna feel pretty bad for him. And so as you take him back and you feel bad for him, as he starts to do some things, like kind of nibble at you, your tendency is to be accepting of that simply because, gee, he's had a rough life. And at this point, there's been no major big release because we're not working hard enough for this horse to need a physical break right now. So to give him a physical break right now would only give him time to get foolish with his mouth and his body again. So I'm not even gonna give him that break for another few minutes until he starts to think, gee, I would like to quit doing this exercise. This is a boring exercise. Let me give you an example of what we're doing. In the seventh grade, my mother was also my English teacher. And my best friend loved to make paper airplanes and disrupt class. And so Mark was making paper airplanes one day. And my mom just looked at him and she said, Mark, I need 250 paper airplanes completed before class is over. And do you know that Mark never made another paper airplane in class again? Because it took the fun out of it. If there's no disruption in it, why do it? So what we're doing is this horse loves to kind of pick with his nose and move his feet in nervous habits. So what are we doing? We're playing with his nose and moving his feet in nervous patterns. So that when I finally do say, hey, you can stand still, he's going to think, gee, it'd be really nice to stand still. Move those hindquarters. Watch that front end there. I don't want that front end pushing on me. He needs to move it softly in response to me. We need to lower his head there. Get that nose softer and closer to the ground. There we go. There we go. All of a sudden he's starting to kind of figure it out there. There we go. Let him walk along here. Lower that head. What did I say all horses have to do in order to do this? They have to calm down. Every horse has to calm down when he puts his nose on the ground. Okay, so just let him keep saying, no, put your nose down lower. And all I've done is every time he's dropped his nose, I've given him a release. And so now, He's figured out, you mean if I put my nose right down on the ground and walk around here, you'll leave me alone. And I keep telling him, well, except for the fact that you've got to walk with me, yes. You bring that nose back up. There we go. And this is on his right side, which was his poorer side. But all of a sudden, it just clicked right there. That you mean, Ken, I can get rid of you like this? And this is where the full cheek snaffle is really helpful. Because it put, puts the pressure across this whole cheek piece instead of just in the corner of his mouth. So when I pick up on the right side of this rein, the left rein is applying pressure, the left side of the bit is applying pressure to the left side of his nose, bringing him to me. Just walk him along here, there we go. There we go, look at that. I wanna really make sure you understand how I'm putting it down. I'm putting it down by lifting in the top corner of the bit, top corner of his mouth. 
I'm lifting that bit above the corner of his mouth. And what he does is says, how can I get away from this? So he lifts his head up. Well, my hand stays up there. So he can't get above it. So finally, he lifts, takes his head down. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to see this horse start changing his behavior. Because suddenly, not only am I controlling his feet and where they go and how they move, but now I'm controlling his head elevation, where he places it, and that, in turn, controls his emotions. What I'd like is just get the horse to really drag his nose there on the ground consistently without trying to bring it back up. Now, I've given him a cue. How hard is it going to be to clip his bridle path with his head in that position? Well, if his feet aren't moving, it shouldn't be hard at all, right? But currently, his feet are moving, so that's going to be pretty difficult. So we're going to come back now and work on getting his head in that position without his feet moving. Let him start to appreciate slowing down. Once that head comes up, the head's got to go back down. There. And there's his head down with his feet still. Okay, I'm going to switch to the other side. What you do on one side, you've got to do on the other one. Bring him to me right here. I love this. Now right there, that's okay. Something bothers him, something spooks him, what am I going to do? I'm going to go right back to what we were doing, that's the point. When he spooks like that, don't try to settle him down. Don't try to tell him it's okay. Because he knows it's not okay, he nearly died. Instead, get his feet moving. He knows, Ken, I nearly died right there. Something scared me. So I just come back and say, hey, it's okay. Now, what you do on one side, you must do on the other side, but because of the way the full cheek snaffle bit works, where it works on both sides at the same time, look at that, good boy, good boy, good boy, there we go. It takes no time at all when we switch sides to make things come back. Put that nose back. Okay, so Dee Dee's brought me a pair of Pro-LT wall clippers. Real tiny, real light, real easy to handle, real quiet. So what I'm going to have you do, Dee, I want you to walk around with these and, and turn them on. And come in and out. And my goal for this se segment, this session, is just to get his head on the ground nice and calm while you stand within this range with the clippers. Okay. And if I can accommodate, if I can accomplish that, that's a ton. And then if we get in where you settle down and calm, I'd love to see you coming in and out right here and just to where he's absolutely could care less. Okay. Hopefully that's like 32 seconds from now. All right. So I'm going to go right back to what we were doing and just put his head down. You can back up just a little bit, give him a little bit of room. And turn him on. And turn him on. Okay, right there, his head comes up, I put it right back down. Head comes up, put it down. Okay, he says, I'm getting away. Go ahead and come with us. He's leaving those clippers. I don't want him to leave those clippers. I want those clippers. There you go, now don't, don't push too much. But right here, we gotta go back and say, look, there's the answer. And he says, look, I'm out of here, Ken. Tell him, yep, here's the answer right here. So at this moment, I can barely hear those clippers. He can hear them well enough that he's leaving the country. Okay, you can see he's annoyed. His tail's ringing 200 miles an hour. And I'm just gonna keep coming back here saying, hey, there is one answer, it's right here. This is the answer. Soften that face, soften those feet. Here's the answer, nothing's changed. I love battery operated clippers. They give you the opportunity to move around and work your horse. Now look at him, even though he's annoyed, he's actually starting to move into Dee Dee's space a little bit just to see what's going on. 
Put your nose right back down here, nice and calm. Put your nose right back down here. There we go. There we go. We've practiced this enough. The muscle memory's kicking in, and he's saying, oh yeah, this is that thing I do right there. Back off and shut him off. By stopping his feet and keeping his head down, he made the clippers go away. That's what I want him to learn. I want him to learn by staying calm and stopping his feet, he made those clippers go away. So we just kind of stay with him now. This is the closest he's had them. They're in my hand that's close to him. We just kind of go with it here. Don't try to stop his fright and flight reflux. Let him have it. If he needs to flee, that's okay. Let him have that fright and flight reflex. But where's it gonna end? With his feet still on the ground. And that's when those clippers are gonna get shut off. It's when his feet stop moving and we end up with his nose down on the ground and things settling down. There, his feet start slowing down. Wait for that nose to come down. Shut off the clippers, just like that. Turn them on, there we go. Look at that. Good, nope, 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 we're not going anywhere. Good. 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 Again, we're not clipping his bridle path. He's gonna take one step at a time. First, he's gotta just be willing to let you run him near him, then run him on him. So we're gaining ground, we're getting there. So Linda, what did you think? I thought it was an amazing transformation from where you started to where you end, and it's astounding. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing him and being on the show. We so Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. All right. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and until next week, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, a perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Gonna take a ride on one true